Thank you. Would like to add my welcome to everyone. I'm going to focus on these five areas and spend the bulk of my time on the first item, both because of its timeliness in terms of the 2018 election and also because we'll need your help if we are going to be successful in submitting an application for the Carnegie classification for community engagement, a goal that we have for this year. Frostburg has earned a national reputation in civic engagement, one that has been shaped largely by the work that the student and community involvement staff have, have been doing in partnership with the Bell Institute for Public Affairs. We are one of only two institutions in Maryland that has earned the designation of a voter-friendly campus and one of only seven institutions in the entire country that have been selected by NASPA, a leading student affairs professional association, to serve as a consulting institution as part of their lead initiative. These institutions provide guidance and, and expertise to other institutions that are focused on enhancing their civic, civic engagement on their campus. Our efforts this fall are being shaped by a belief that higher education has a unique responsibility to assert that facts do indeed exist and that we will not become resigned to living in a post-truth world. We are collaborating with colleagues across the country to challenge students to become part of an informed electorate. To address civic and information literacy, we are partnering with the Ort Library, the Bell Institute for Public Affairs, those teaching the Introduction to Higher Education course, and the Office of Civic Engagement to make available to the entire campus a free digital subscription to the New York Times. We expect that students will be encouraged to think for themselves and learn how to thoughtfully evaluate the reliability of different news sources. And as during the 2016 election, we are holding town halls, partnering again with Jameson O'Done in, in the visual arts department to sponsor another political cartoon contest, and of course, making a concerted and bipartisan effort to get students to vote. I said earlier that we need help from many of our faculty to put together a compelling application for the Carnegie classification. A successful application must demonstrate that community engagement is embedded in the heart of our academic enterprise. That we have courses that are clearly designated as community engaged and that we have an institutional definition of community engaged coursework. Earlier this summer, $5,000 from strategic planning funds was earmarked for stipends for faculty members to assist us in this effort. Those interested should be on the lookout for an email from Ben Norris, chair of the faculty, which will provide further details regarding this particular initiative. Our work to enhance the career readiness of our students is guided by the competencies identified by the National Association of Colleges and Employers, a list that is remarkably similar to the value rubrics that have been developed by the Association of American Colleges and Universities. Both of these lists remind us of the critical role that the liberal arts play in the development of skills most valued by employers today. So as Dr. Mathias and his General Education Program Review Committee finalizes the competencies that will shape our new GEP. And we continue our work with the University System of Maryland Digital Badging Project. We'll continue to explore how our co-curricular programs can contribute to the development of the competencies we view as critical for a Frostburg graduate. Other initiatives in the area of, of career readiness include the development of a pilot course in partnership with the leadership of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, one that will be modeled after the existing professional development courses in the College of Business and in educational professions. 
Additionally, we are exploring new software and new strategies to deepen our relationships with employers in this area and throughout the Mid-Atlantic. This architect's rendering of the interior of our new residence hall, which we just broke ground on this summer, and the first traditional residence hall that has been built on this campus since 1976 will provide high quality and attractive living spaces for our students. But as Dr. Nwachek noted in his remarks to the Faculty Senate yesterday, it will also put a spotlight on the contrast between this new building and the condition of the rest of our residence halls. We are right now focusing on developing new systems to more effectively identify priorities for the repair and maintenance of our existing halls. And I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to publicly acknowledge and, and thank Carl Crow for his willingness to take on a whole other job, uh, and that is as interim director of, of residence life following a, a sudden resignation of, of our previous director this, this past August. So Carl, thank you. Creating a campus climate that is welcoming to, to each and every student on this campus is one of our highest priorities. Cultural competency, is clearly an essential skill for our graduates and an area that continues to offer opportunities for close collaboration with our partners in academic affairs. Last month, we were pleased to be able to support an excellent workshop on implicit bias, an initiative of Dr. Boyce Williams, Interim Dean of the College of Education. There are some other quick updates in this area. President Nwachik will be creating an ad hoc committee to explore the feasibility of converting the old police building to a cultural center. That building has historical significance to the African American community in this area and would be an ideal location for such a center. We're pleased that Rashid Cromwell, an attorney who works with the Black Lives Matter movement, will be returning to campus this fall to present two different workshops. In the Center for Student Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, we'll be offering a retreat, a social justice summit the weekend of October 5th through the 7th. And in partnership with Chartwells, we will be sponsoring a Train the Trainers workshop that will be conducted by the National Coalition Building Institute this November. And finally, look for a campus-wide email next week that will launch a new wellness tool that will be available to everyone on campus, students, faculty, and staff. The Pacifica app provides resources and exercises designed to build resilience and emotional intelligence based on both the cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness. This app is designed to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. I learned this morning that some of our students have already been using the free app that is already available to anyone. Uh, we also know that next week when, when this new app is launched, it's the premium version that offers about 70% more resources. So if you're using the free one, I would definitely suggest that you upgrade to the, to the one that will be available next week. As we explore how to most effectively integrate contemplative practices into the student experience, here at Frostburg State. We appreciate the initiative that Dr. Holly Curie has taken to emphasize mindfulness in the personal wellness course that she is teaching as part of a learning community this semester. We hope to learn from her experience with this course. And finally, on behalf of the very committed staff in student affairs that I feel very blessed to work with, we look forward to sustaining our existing partnerships and creating new ones as we all work together for the benefit of this university and for our students and wish you all the best in the coming semester. Thank you.